Hi, it's Maggie. Today I'm looking at the chart of Lada, Astro Lada. She gave out her birth information. So, yeah, I just thought I'd take a look. And the geometry in her chart is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, you, you look under astrology and she pretty much rules the airwaves. So um, she has a beautiful kite formation and she is just a ball of fire. So Astro Lada, Lada... Sheba was born April 14th, 1981 at 3.20 a.m. in Yambol, Bulgaria. That's the birth information she gave out when uh, the new trance that she created she was showing in one of her videos. So she's very much an Aries with a, a Aquarius ascendant and her moon is in Leo. So she... Her ruler is in the 10th house of career, and it's right on the MC. So she's doing exactly what, you know, what she's called to do, being an astrologer, because Aquarius is the ruler of, rather, Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius, and it's in her midheaven, in her 10th house. So she felt a, a calling early on to, to do this. Uh, it's 29 degrees. Yeah, and so I just want to jump to her Aries house. It's, it's, um, her, her chart looks like a diamond. You know, the kite, it looks like a diamond. It, it really is beautiful. And, and a kite formation is comprised of uh, trines and they're connected, you know, at the top of the kite by sextiles. E just beautiful, easy flowing aspects. But she is a ball of fire, so all that fire, you know, can give her a lot of nervous energy that she has, has to burn off because she has sun, 23 degrees Aries, all in the second house. So she's really good with money, with assets. I mean, that's very important to her. She values that. And being a Aries, and she has a whole stellium in Aries. She's really a self-starter, you know, very original hard worker. She has the ruler Mars, ruler of Aries in, in uh, Aries. So in her second house, also Mercury, planet of communication. She started her YouTube channel about astrology. Um, and she's, she's a master of communication. And um, yeah, she also has the sun and Venus, Venus 25 degrees so Venus is conjunct her sun in Aries, and that's conjunct Mars, and Mercury's like nine degrees. So they're all in her second house, and they're all opposing her Pluto in the ninth house of Libra. But yeah, she has quite a bit going on in the midheaven, but I'll get to that first. I'm just trying to get through her second house, her Aries house. So she's very good, very, very good at, at being original, creative, you know, Mars gives her energy, ambition, and with so much fire, you know, the, the Aquarius, <clears throat> Aquarius Ascendant would give her so many ideas. You know, they're very mental, very, very quick. It's an air sign, you know, so she, she presents air, but she's predominantly all fire. Uh, you know, this, this fire trine that she has that, that makes up the kite is... Uh, Moving on, and she's got the moon in Leo in the seventh house of relationships, partnerships, and also her north node is in the seventh house in Leo. Leo, so she's um, yeah, she's had she's had some good luck, I think, with relationships, partnerships, and it's let me just get around the wheel first, yeah. So it's sextiling I'm getting to the top of the kite it's sextiling um, it's trining rather it's trining Neptune in Neptune in Sagittarius so yeah that's more more energy to burn and yeah and so yeah, Pluto Pluto she has Pluto transformation um, it's also it's the ruler of Scorpio, so that's, that, that would be delving deeply. Um, it is in Libra. Pluto is in Libra, 22 degrees, but um, 
and she has Scorpio in her ninth house. But so that, that affects her belief system and being an Aquarian, they're so open-minded and having Pluto up there, you know, the, the ruler up there near her midheaven and Uranus as well. Um, Saturn gives her her discipline. Um, so she uses her probably her beauty, her sexuality to get what she wants <laughs> because she also has Jupiter up there as well, it, all in Libra, three degrees. So Libra is hard work. Jupiter is good fortune, and Pluto is just <clears throat> going to. She's probably a workaholic. I think she. I think I know she. She works very, very hard, and with all that fire, she could be subject to burnout. So you know, t trying to take it easy with this much fire could be difficult because she does not have a lot of earth. Uh, yeah, and to have the business she has, well, it's because of her second house. With no earth, I'm going, what's up with that? But it's in her second house of Taurus. And so that is an earth house. So that, that would account for something. And also her mid, mid heaven in the 10th house, Uranus. Um, she's doing, <clears throat> doing you know, what, what she's meant to do. Her Chiron is in earth. Her Chiron is in Taurus, third house, so... She's using her, her wounded healer, um, and it's, for her, it's not all about making money. I mean, she genuinely loves astrology, and with Pluto opposing just about everything in Aries, I mean, she, she likes to go very deep with it, and so boundaries might be a real issue for her. Um, yeah, they could be an issue. So the moon, moon, moon and north node is the powers of attraction in Leo. It's like a showman, you know, people, you know, partnerships. and um, Yeah, so she's just all over the airwaves. So the trine, God, yeah, the trine. I have a stellium in Aries myself, but hers, <laughs> hers has, yeah, quite, quite a bit more. And it just looks like such a lucky, easy flowing chart. However, because of all the fire, the lack of earth, but the second house kind of compensates for that. But still, it's that Mars ruled and the ruler Mars in the second house. I mean, she is driven. She is driven. So she has Sun, Mercury, Venus, planet of attraction, and Mars. So, you know, it's all about law of attraction with money with her naturally because it's second house, what values and assets and, um, yeah. And so being independent, though, being creatively independent, that's totally Aries. I mean, she would not want to work for anyone else, and if she did, she, well, she would want to work independently, which is what she does, and she would love that. Um, because Aries does not like to be told what to do. And, you know, it's all, all about creativity, originality, super impulsive, very impulsive, headstrong, and willful. Um, and Neptune as well, it's immutable Sagittarius. So that's, you know, different countries, you know. She's, she's uh, uses her Neptune in, in her work, and, you know, she's, all over, all over the world on the airwaves, you know, tuning in with her Neptune. But yeah, she is, you know, she has traveled and lived in several foreign countries. So um, that would be Neptune and Sagittarius. And she is a teacher as well. She is an astrology teacher. So um, that's her Uranus as well, up in the MC and her Neptune and Sagittarius. So with Pluto and Saturn up there, she, she was very disciplined in her learning, I believe, you know. Um, just learning, lear learning her um, astrology and then learning it deep enough because of Saturn and Pluto to be able to, to teach it, which is what she does. But relationships are all important to her, the moon, and she likes to be, you know, she likes to shine because, you know, the moon in Leo. Um, yeah, but that, that second house, yeah, she, I don't, she's good with money, very good with money. And Chiron, the wounded healer, um, 
in the third house of communication. So she uses that, you know, maybe she uses her inner wounding or whatever to, to talk about it, you know, with other people and share, share about it. Um, yeah, so her air is Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto all in Libra. So that's, you know, Libra's harmony, beauty, fashion, social relationships. Um, so, yeah, she's very much all about that. And Earth, she only has Chiron and water. Not a lot of water. So she does need to be aware of burnout. Uh, you know, exercise or do something. Learn how to meditate. Because all this air, she's got constantly all these stimulating ideas coming to her. That she's channeling through her Pluto and Saturn and Jupiter in, in uh, Libra, opposing her stellium and Aries. So, yeah, she's, so she's constantly thinking and const because, you know, it's cardinal air, cardinal air, and then she has fixed air ascendant. So it's probably hard to, for her to shut her mind off, and the ideas keep flowing. And so, um, yeah, so I think meditation or something like that, you know, uh, maybe trying to be by the water more would be would be healing and therapeutic for her. Maybe to put your feet in the in the because I I too have no earth in my chart. The only earth I have is Chiron, and she has that as well. Her Chiron is in Taurus, and mine is in uh, mine is in Capricorn. However, she. Her earth house is more than compensated for, you know, her 10th house. Uranus is up there in the 10th house. And the second house is, you know, already talked about her Aries second house. So that's, that's full. That is full. So that's her earth. That's represented. That's represented. Um, so her only water is Uranus and the MC. And that's a Scorpio. So that's powers of attraction. That is joint assets. I mean, she has so many joint assets going on right now that she probably can't even keep track of them. And it is regarding astrology. So she has a lot of people working for her. She has good luck in partnerships. Um, yeah, because Scorpio is all about joint, joint assets and partnerships. So, um, yeah, so the only, yeah, she's got a really, really beautiful geometry in her chart. I was kind of jealous. Like, I was going, wow. But she does have the moon in conjunct to um, Mercury. So, again, that would be nervous energy, a lot of nervous energy. You know, it's always fidgeting. That's, you know, that's what Aries do. They're always have have to be moving and to have a whole stellium in Aries, yeah, you would, you would constantly be fidgeting with, you know, um, hard to, hard to sit still. And so I think, you know, traveling, um, just using the fire energy would be very good and using all her ideas. Um, yeah, she's, she's just got a beautiful chart, really beautiful chart, just one in conjunct, uh, the only square I see is Jupiter square Neptune. And that is just, actually, it's beneficial for her. Jupiter square Neptune, she has had good luck um, with foreigners moving to foreign countries. It seems like, I don't know, every time she moved, it, things got better for her. But I don't, I don't know what, what her story is. But um, Jupiter is also the ruler of Sagittarius, so that again would make her a very good teacher. So she, you know, she she tried really hard to learn her trade, and yeah. So the only in conjunct is uh, Mercury to the Moon, so that may cause her a little trouble in relationships. Aries, Mercury and Aries just uh, Mercury Mars and Aries they just blurt things out. They're extremely impulsive. Um, I too have. Sun and Mercury and Aries, so I I don't have Mars, though. I don't have the ruler there, or Venus, so yeah, it just, 
But it's her Mercury that is in conjunct her moon in, in relationship house, seventh house of Leo. So, you, you know, she, she could be sort of headstrong, you know, when it comes to relationships or maybe maybe a little impulsive. Um, but there, there's a powerful attraction there too, you know, going on. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. And um, yeah, she really truly has a beautiful chart. All right, take care. Oh, if you like this channel, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.